YouTube, what's up with it? It's Envy Cosmeg Grower, and of course, your big homie, Mr. Big Dookie. And me and your homie, we're back for another weekly update. And you see Dookie's over in his spot. Oh man, what to talk about first? How about we just get right into the flower time like normal? No, actually, we'll talk about a few other things. Um, I'm a day late on my update this week. Really, eh, about two days. I originally started this. I always did them on Sunday the last month and a half, two months. I've been doing, recording them on Mondays and uh, posting them on Tuesdays. Today is Tuesday. So I'm definitely a day late. Sorry about that to uh, everyone that watches fairly religiously. You know, I know you guys appreciate my updates. It gets you through the week, so it makes me feel a little bad when I'm late, too. But it is what it is. Life is busy. And some of what I've been busy with is getting ready to go on vacation. So I will be here next week. I will have an update for you next week, but the week after that, I will not. And that's because I have a vacation plan to go to both Jamaica and Puerto Rico. So it should be a lot of fun. March, uh, Early in March, I'm going to spend three days and four nights in Jamaica. And then I'm going to spend uh, three days and three nights in Puerto Rico. And so, yeah, you guys will end up missing an update. Which reminds me, though... Um, my wife has family in Puerto Rico, so that's cool. We always got hookups over there. She's half Puerto Rican, half black, so that's a whole different side note. But uh, we can uh, definitely have hookups over in Puerto Rico. But if anyone knows a good uh, hookup in Montego Bay, Jamaica, so I can definitely get some good uh, sun-dried cannabis, I would really appreciate it. So that's all I really have to say. Um, next week I'll have another update remind you guys I'll be out of town the week after and yeah that's about it other than that you can see the light I'm still waiting on has not come in but I got a new 400 watt metal halide we'll uh, talk about that later so let's get into flower alright time to white balance okay here we go um, I guess we'll start out with the oldest first, even though nothing's really that old in here. Uh, I believe it's day 29 for the Medusa. And that's this one here in the back. See, it's very sativa dominant leaf structure, but it didn't stretch at all, so I got a pretty short, stocky, bushy sativa. Kind of weird. But it's definitely growing in. It's uh, filling in some nice little buds. It's not massive colas by any means for how far into flower it is but there is a good amount of frost on it so I think it's going to make some pretty high quality beds see the frost there let's see if I can get you guys a little closer but yeah Nice little bud buds all over the place. Definitely a pretty plant. That's the Medusa by Nirvana Seeds on day 29 of flower. So you see it's lifted up slightly on uh, one of my little hooker cases there. So it's lifted up about six inches off the tray. And it's in a number five pot. So doing its thing. You notice that's in the spot where the bubble fish was. The bubble fish was right here and filled the whole scrog, so now it's out of there and Medusa's in that back corner. So, let's move it on to the next ones. How about the purple fires, which are on day 18 and need to be lollipoped. I should have lollipoped them uh, a couple days ago, really, and didn't. I think they pretty much completely stopped stretching uh, both phenos. See, I got two different phenos, this one and that one. This phenol right here has been super happy. You can see how the leaves are praying at 
like beyond a 45 degree angle. They're just loving life, and it, it's been like this ever since I put it in flower. So, for whatever reason, this phenotype just loves the way I grow, loves my environment, and has been nothing but happy. I mean, see, it's got decent structure. It needs to get lollipop. I need to trim off about everything from here down. Really let it, you know, clean up. Let the buds fill in from here up. So, and same thing on this one over here. This one's a little more indica dominant phenotype. And uh, it needs to get cleaned up down here below. You can see how it's pretty thick foliage and needs to get cleaned up from about here down. And the rest of this can turn into colas. So, and I think I'll probably do that uh, tomorrow. It's a little late today, and after this video, I got uh, one more thing I got to do. I got to refill my nutrient bins. So. Yeah, Medusa, Purple Fire, Purple Fire. These ones are both the same strain and both came from Bag Seed from my brother-in-law up in the Bay Area. Purple Fire is supposed to be super dank. He actually said this was one of the best sacks he got all last year. So that's the only reason I grew it. And I wanted to see if I'd get any Hermes, which I have not. I've been looking around throughout some of the lower buds on both phenotypes and I have not noticed a single Hermes throughout anywhere in there which is a wonderful thing so but like I said the also the problem is being that this is a uh, bag seed I knew it came from a purple fire plant but we can't be 100% certain on the genetics maybe there was a male or a hermaphrodite plant of a different type that was in the same flower room as this and got crossed with the purple fire so this might be a hybrid it might not it might be pure purple fire from another purple fire plant or possibly the same purple fire plant hermaphroditing and uh, causing it to self-pollinate on itself. So you never know. And honestly, I have a feeling that's what it is because my brother-in-law said he found like eight beans or so all in one bud. So that probably had a self-hermaphrodited uh, nutsack that pollinated just the bud around it in mid to late flower. And that's probably where these are in mid to early flower and that's probably where these seeds came from so my guess is it's pure purple fire feminized through hermaphroditic traits but i can't be 100 percent certain but we should still end up with some super dank weeds so i'm pretty excited to see what happens out of both those phenotypes and those are on day 18 just like i said so they're coming along. Now let's move it over to this beast right here. This one is Toxic Lord by North Genetics. It's my North Genetics crew. My homie's been doing their thing here. And this is Godbud crossed with Chemdog. See, I grew myself a monster, hoping for a good phenotype. And uh, she's doing her thing. I got her in the number seven pot here. And she's beasting up pretty well. She's gonna fill up a quarter of the tent pretty easily I'm pretty sure and she actually got a nice nice stretch to her actually it looks a lot like chem dog so oh no we'll see we'll see this is God Bud crossed with chem dog and it's on day 10 so for day 10 we definitely have some nice structure you can see but buds are filling in great uh, if you look real close at some of the leaves next to it you can see where the pores are going to make trichomes here shortly but just haven't pushed through yet so definitely cool stuff and i'm looking forward to checking this out so north genetics god bud cross chem dog so and this got about another week until i lollipop i said those ones need to be a lollipop this one's got eh, maybe a week half a week something like that later this week it'll probably get a lollipop and then back here on day two of flower, purple chemo G filling the scrog net. Let's see if we can look down here. You can see we got another number seven pot. It has not been lollipopped yet. It uh, went through a little bit of a beating. I actually had to take a tomato cage off of this plant. Then I let it sit and veg for another day or two this past week. And uh, just kind of poof out all over the damn place. And then two days ago, put it in flower and see it's filling up the scrog pretty nicely so I'm really expecting this to be uh, a really nice harvest of purple chem OG out of the scrog this round and I'm pretty excited to run it because it's been quite a while since I have I think the last time I harvested one of these plants was damn near a year ago so 
should be fun. Super frosty, a little fluffy. The note spacing isn't the greatest either. You know, it's definitely, structure-wise, it's a horrible plant. Frost and flavor, incredible. So that's why I keep up with that one. Every once in a while, I gotta run it. And honestly, I think the next time I get a cut of one of my uh, old cuts from my homeboy, I think I'm gonna run Smurf Berry stuff. So it's been a while since I ran that too. So, either case, that's Purple Chem OG. Medusa from Nirvana Seeds, Purple Fire from Bag Seed, and Toxic Lord, North Genetics. So, that's what I got going in flower right now. And I can happily say my tent's been nice and full for the past week. Uh, the only other thing I have to say about flower is I think my dripper system's starting to fail. I need to get a new pressure regulating manifold. See this little piece right there, that little red piece? It's a four port, uh, I believe, 10 gallon per hour. Yeah, you can kind of see it on there. Uh, four port outlet bubbler. It's more or less a manifold with a pressure regulator in there, so it only lets each individual line gets 10 gallons per hour coming out, and then I regulate it down from there. But I think this is starting to get clogged up and fail because it's, uh, the last couple days I've been hand feeding all my plants in flower, and I gotta feed them every day because they're in cocoa and it's just not been pumping when it should have. So I think I'm gonna end up having to replace that section. I already checked my pump and my pump is still working fine. It pumps with full pressure and everything when I take the hoses off of it. So I'm gonna have to replace that out this week and I'm pretty sure my dripper system will be back to working normal, at least here in flower, so. And that's what we got. A little ways away from anything getting ready to harvest, but I did just finish harvesting, so we should be all right and should make up for a rather nice summer with a lot of buds to look at here in a, another month or two. So all right, y'all, we're gonna move it on over to veg. All right, see veg is looking uh, a little empty for now, but that's fine with me. I got uh, my two Odins are in the red cups. We'll start smallest first this time for once. Uh, Odin is across from North Gen Genetics, which is uh, pretty crazy. It's GDP crossed with Purple Cheese, and then that's crossed with Doja Berry cross Candy Land. So both my little seedlings came up. They're both growing at a rather, rather good rate, you know, staying nice and tight noted and very happy. So. Can't complain so far. Pretty awesome little plants. Can't wait for them to get out of seedling stage and start blowing up, which uh, shouldn't be too long. They should start picking up growth here pretty soon. You can see they're starting to get onto like their um, second node there and be moving out of the third soon. And then usually from that point on, they start speeding up faster and faster veg. So the other two small ones I got, this one right here is Beyond Dream. This is my Keeper Fino Beyond Dream, which is freaking incredible, so can't wait till this thing, uh, this thing's, well, it was a clone, it's already got roots, it just needs to get growing, so that's all we're waiting on there is a little faster growth rate. You should be alright, see a little bit of algae down there, but overall that's okay. A lot of people worry about that green stuff you get sometimes on your perlite, sometimes on rock wall down there. What that really is, the majority of the time, that green is an algae. And uh, algae won't really do a whole lot to ruin your root growth or ruin your plants at all. More or less, they uh, work similar to plants and eat CO2, release oxygen, that type of thing. So, But they don't, uh, they don't do a whole lot of harm either. So if you do see just a faint amount of green like that, it's not really a problem. If you see any molds or anything starting to thicken up on your soil top, then you know you have a problem, probably with too much humidity or overwatering your medium or something along those lines but algae is fairly common I've gotten that question quite a bit and you know from new growers and it's not something you have to worry about so much it's not really gonna harm your plant it just looks ugly so it is what it is this one over here is dreamberry and it uh this is the f4 mother plant to the current f5 line of seeds for North Genetics, so 
I'm really stoked to have this plant. This is the chronic cut of dream berries. This is one of the best phenos of dream berry to come out yet. And I got this as a cutting, got it rooted. It's definitely got some roots. In fact, you can even see it's only been in this pot about four days now, five days. And you can see there's already some roots poking down through the edge of the pot. So very stoked about that. Dream Berry by North Genetics, which is Blue Dream Cross Plush Berry and super dank pheno hunted pheno of it so that's really cool kind of stoked for everything small i have in veg here i may eventually go to my homeboy's house like i said and get a smurf berry that might be you know maybe a size bigger than one of these two just to fill in space uh, eventually for over here but like i said i got at least a month month and a half until that one comes out and that'll probably be the first one out but when that one goes a bunch of the rest of these will go quickly after so yeah that's what I got for little ones and so now let's talk about this big ugly in the back this is my auto flower chocolate skunk you see it looks a little different than last week I actually turned it around this plant I had facing the exact same direction its entire life and we're going to talk about the importance of rotating your plants so when you're in a growing environment like this and you have a single source of light like I actually have two because I have the HPS and that but you have a single main output of light then it's really important you rotate your plan around every day or every other day so that way different leaves can absorb the light and photosynthesize properly because obviously your roots don't know which part of your plant's getting light and which isn't it's just absorbing the nutrients and sending them up so this side of my plant was actually facing against this side of the tent for about three weeks straight without getting rotated and you can see the bud structure on this side is horrible like for instance look at this bud right here looking like crap almost nothing to it uh, really nitrogen toxic from overloading nitrogen without being able to assimilate any chlorophyll you know and just almost no production at all because without any chlorophyll you then can't produce any sugars which then can't produce any ATP which then can't move any energy throughout cells in order to produce new cells so it definitely posed quite a bit of problem on this back side of the plant but on a much better note if you look at the other side of the plant this autoflower has some of the biggest buds I've ever grown in my life so this is the ugly side of the plant that I'm going to leave out front here for probably the next couple weeks because this side has already filled out pretty massively. So look at this. One of the biggest buds I've ever grown and it's on an auto flower. Like the size of this bud is ranking up with that Northern Lights big bud I grew a few months ago that had super massive colas. See that one back there, something similar. So some really, really good stuff. A really fuely, starting to get a little bit of that uh, cocoa smell to it too. So, pretty dank stuff. See, it's got a good amount of frost on it. The bud structure is not that great, but at least it's huge, so there's going to be a whole lot of weight to it. And that's our Autoflower Chocolate Skunk. This thing is on day 80, no, 75 now. So, let me move this thing back around let some of these crappier buds get a little more light so hopefully they fill out over the next couple weeks I got a uh, just from the looks of it I'm starting to get a few hairs browning over I haven't really looked at the trichomes but I know they're still a little early I'm thinking I got about two and a half weeks so I'm gonna keep feeding it nutrients for the next few days and then I'm gonna start flushing before next week's update I'm gonna start the flush on this so yeah, about two and a half weeks out. I'd say less than 20 days and this will get its chop. Probably aiming somewhere around uh, day 95 or so. It's on day 75 now. Between 90 and 95. Definitely looks about right though. And that's veg for right now. Looking amazing. Leroy's doing his thing. So one more plant to talk about, kind of, actually two more plants, let's go over here first. 
see the Bubba Kush. I actually did do a harvest video on this, which I will release later this week. I'll give you guys a day or two for my subscribers to watch this video first. And later this week, I'll uh, show you guys the harvest video I did for this that I just recorded. Actually, like half hour to an hour before I started recording our weekly update. So, pretty awesome stuff, but a little preview of what's going on. You can see the structure. This is the giant Bubba Kush that was in my flower tent taking up the whole scrog here and had a tomato cage over this side here so that's a big old number 10 pot and that's my yield from it this is a 20 inch by 36 inch tent so pretty massive almost filled the whole tent seven inch squares on this trellis netting that I got the buds hanging from pretty dope though So, one more plant to talk about. If you wanted some close-ups on that last plant, go watch the, uh, you know, just wait for the harvest video. I'm not walking back over there. This one is my Beyond Dream, though, and you see it's really beasting out amazing. And I uh, had picked up a new hood and light that you see right here that's a 400-watt metal halide Apollo bulb, just a cheap... Uh, Benda hood, reflector hood. So you see, it's not the adjust winged where it actually has the cords holding it in place. This is just one of them where you bend it. But realistically, I paid $15 for the bulb, I paid $30 for the hood. I already had the ballast, which is up there at 400 watt. So I think it'll get me going for 45 bucks. That's plenty enough. It's been in here running for the last week or so, and uh, it's really put out you know a good amount of growth on my plant here I uh, don't know what else to say I'm pretty happy about this uh, this project is eventually gonna get scrogged actually honestly I'll tell you guys my plan for this tent is to get a 3 by 3 tray put a reservoir underneath it run a flood and drain tray I'm gonna sometime this week actually I'm gonna take this beyond dream that's in a tall number seven pot and I'm gonna put it in that big number 10 pot that the Bubba's in over there. That pot. I'm gonna end up transplanting that into, and then I wanna run a flood and drain on a single plant here in flower. And I think that'll help me out a lot too for while I'm out in Jamaica and that just to have uh, all my plants automated. I got my buddy that's gonna come through and check on my garden a couple times, but I gotta make sure everything's automated and running well before I go, so. Yeah, that's the plant there, and as soon as I get the flood and drain going, I also plan on building a scrog net that will fill out this whole 4x4 tent. And then eventually, hopefully about another week, week and a half, I'm hoping, at least the last correspondence from a little bit ago, uh, I was told that somewhere at the end of February, the light I'm waiting on will be at the distributor in the US and then shortly after that I'll get it so hopefully before I go on my trip I'll have the new light in and I'll be able to get this plant vegging underneath that and then as soon as I get back from my trip I'll be able to flip it and flower and like I said my goal is to scrog out this whole 4x4 with this one plant and I think I'll be able to do it you see some of these lines here they definitely have plenty of nodes um, they're starting to get a little longer thinking about I might space up this light another few inches too because these notes have been stacking really tight and I kind of needed to stretch out a little more to fill up space but overall it's been growing and it's been growing at an incredible rate so really can't complain and I'm pretty sure in another three weeks like I said I'll be able to fill up enough of this space that I can flip it and flower and end up filling the whole four by four so that should be a fun project. And that's what I got going now for this tent. Well, experimental new project tent, flower tent, veg tent, big dookie. Let's take a dab. We got some really good dabs to look at this time too. So, ah crap, my table's a mess again. Let me clean some things up and I'll come back to you. All right. You guys can see I actually cleaned my rig for once. 
those that follow my channel know that does not happen too often so and then I'll show you why I clean my rig I want to take some delicious clean dabs for this notice I don't have much left but I gotta give a special shout out and thank you to Miss Dabbing 916 or Mrs. Dabbing 916 my homegirl she uh, has one of the dopest rosin presses in the game and for my wedding she sent me a bladed wedding gift of some Smurfberry rosin butter and you can see she pressed this at super high temperatures or super low temperatures super high pressure under I think she has a 20 ton press with a uh, heated 2x2 two two plates so she can do up to 5,000 psi and it actually presses so hard that some of the water vapor that's left inside the flower will actually instantly vaporize under that much pressure and it'll force those water molecules in between the oil and give you a butter consistency. It's pretty freaking amazing, but this right here is some of the best quality, best flavored rosin or hash that I think I've ever had. So, huge shout out to Ms. Dabbing 916 and uh, I think we're going to take a fat ass dab of this. Let me see if we can get you a real good close up. Look at that stuff. Oh, focus. Pretty freaking awesome butter. So I'm going to scrape this uh, stuff up on the dab tool and heat up my nail and come back to all of you guys. Be right back. Ooh, actually this scrapes up pretty easy. Let me show you. We'll dab all the rest of what's left. I didn't weigh what she had sent out, but there's a good amount here. Much love to the homie. Double N Gen dabbing 916. That is some rosin for you. All right, y'all. I'll be right back. All right, y'all. See, I got that nice and hot. We're gonna have to let it cool for a minute. So, this one's for both Double End Gen dabbing 916 for the awesome rosin, and to all my subs. I'm at somewhere around 15,200 of y'all. So, let's get a nice low temp melt shot. Cheers. Oh my god, that oil is delicious. Probably got it a hair too low of a temp, but burned up most of it. Man, that's a lot of flavor. Better too low a temp than too high. Whew. Delicious. So, big dookie. We out of here. We good and smoked out. Here's the two different metal halide bulbs. I was going to show you guys the different spectral graphs, forgot to. This is the 7200K I have in veg. This is the 4200K I have over here that I got for cheap. <coughs> Alright y'all, I'm faded. That thing hit me. I got a little bit of work to do, then I'm heading to bed. Peace. Uh, can't go out on that. Peace.